Welcome to Russian History Retold, episode 178. Lenin, could you stay a little longer? Last time, we covered a group of men who helped Joseph Stalin rule the Soviet Union, as well as having their arms elbow deep in the murder of millions of people. Today I'm going to do something I've never done in this podcast, and that is answering the question, what if? The question is, what if Lenin lived longer? Maybe 10 years, maybe even 20. It's a question that has been debated for a long time, and one that I'll try to answer as best as I can. Towards the end of the podcast, I'm going to throw in a curveball to totally change the game. I hope you enjoy this. Vladimir Ilyich Ulyanov, better known to the world as Lenin, was born in April of 1870. When the October Revolution took place in 1917, he was 47 years of age. His health has been an issue for quite some time as we know of his diagnosis of a disease sometimes known as Holy Fire or St. Anthony's Fire, which is a severe contagious infection of the skin and tissue. That and Lenin suffered from migraines, ulcers, insomnia, and many other ailments as a young man. More importantly, though, is that his father, Ilya Ulyanov, died of a stroke in January of 1886 when Lenin was only 16. As you can see, the chances of him living to a ripe old age was not very good. One other theory of why he was so ill was a rumor that he was suffering from syphilis. According to a team of neuroscientists in a report published in 2004, his symptoms were consistent with the disease, which would have caused deteriorating mental capacity as he aged. Of course, we're talking in hypothetical terms, so we have to set aside some of his infirmaries, although not entirely. There are a few scenarios that we can play with. He died in 1924 at the age of 53. One of the accelerants, as you might say, was the assassination attempt carried out by Fanny Kaplan in August of 1918. If we take that out of the picture, say she had never shot at him or missed completely, we can easily give Lenin an extra 10 years of life through 1934. Another scenario we will look at is if he survived until 1945, which I will admit would be somewhat of a stretch. But hey, it's a hypothetical podcast, so the rules of nature be damned. If we take this date as the year he dies, he would have survived to the age of 75. Not extraordinarily old, but considering his poor health, very unlikely. The 800-pound gorilla in the corner, so to say, when we talk about extending Vladimir Ilyich's life, is what to do about Joseph Stalin. Stalin took over a number of positions in the Central Committee from Lenin to ease his burden due to the attempt on his life and failing health. This grab for power in the background is what laid the groundwork for his eventual rise to supreme power in the Soviet Union. It is also known that Lenin mistrusted Joseph and wanted him out of power just before he died as seen by Lenin's testament where he recommends removing Stalin from his position as general secretary of the, of the Communist Party. If Lenin was a more vibrant and able leader, it is likely that Stalin would have been removed and replaced by Trotsky, although Leon had alienated himself from his colleagues over the years with his arrogance and self-proclaimed intellectual superiority. People like Kamenev, Bukharin, and Zinoviev would have put up a pretty good fight against Trotsky. Let's think about the ramifications of having Stalin put out of the picture. First off, I don't think he would have likely gone quietly into the night. He would have jockeyed into a more favorable position, but his power base was as general secretary. If he lost that, it is highly unlikely that he could have taken control of the Soviet Union, especially if Lenin remained alive and well. With Stalin out of the way, would we have had all of the purges, especially the one removing the most talented military minds of Russia, a purge that gave Adolf Hitler and Nazi Germany an open door in their invasion on the USSR in June of 1941? One could argue, though, uh, Stalin's terror tactics helped the Soviets to industrialize rapidly, so much so that they were able to repel the invasion and beat the Nazis. 
My opinion here is that Lennon would have done the same thing, although he might have done it a little bit gentler. Now, before any of you go raise a huff about Lenin being as brutal, if not more so than Stalin, I agree. Millions would have died by Lenin's hand, as was by Stalin's. What I propose is that fewer would have been murdered, as Lenin was a pragmatist and able to make adjustments when the people were up in arms, such as the introduction of the NEP, or a new economic policy, he brought about in February of 1921, much to the chagrin of the rest of the Bolshevik leadership. It was in response to the famine gripping the nation, the Kronstadt and the Tambov uh, rebellions. The NEP allowed for some free enterprise to be practiced as a way of helping the Soviet economy recover, which it did. Stalin was to crush this policy and to force collectivization in a brutal manner, which led to the Holomodor in Ukraine and other parts of the Soviet Union. NEP might have softened the blow on the people over the next 20 to 30 years, and made communism more manageable and inspiring to the other leftist political parties in Europe. This single issue may be the most important distinction between Stalin and Lenin being in power. Stalin did very little to help spread communism throughout Europe, giving orders to the German communists to reject having any dealings with the socialists and left-wing organizations. This effectively gave Hitler and his henchmen an easier road to power. In the Spanish Civil War, for instance, Lenin would have likely given far more support to the leftists in their battles against Franco. Stalin was more concerned with the Soviet Union and his power than promoting a global communist uprising, which was something Lenin firmly believed in. Vladimir Ilyich felt that it was his duty to kindle the revolution worldwide. If Lenin had lived to 1934 and died at the age of 64, Stalin might have been a member of the Politburo, but nowhere near the leader he became. In this scenario, there would have been an ample time for Vladimir Ilyich to develop an heir or build a consensus of leaders. Here's another theory that has been rarely mentioned, and that is one where Stalin takes out Lenin in the early 1920s. This idea is not that far-fetched as one might think. Stalin was the general secretary, and it had already built up a very strong group of allies. Lenin had wanted to get rid of Joseph, as was seen by his testament. Quote, Stalin is too crude, and this defect, which is entirely acceptable in our milieu and in relationships among us as communists, becomes unacceptable in the position of general secretary. I therefore propose to comrades that they should devise a means of removing him from this job and should appoint to this job someone else who is distinguished from Comrade Stalin in all other respects, only by the single superior aspect that he should be more tolerant, more polite, more attentive towards comrades, less capricious, etc. In this scenario, though, Lenin's health would have had to have been an issue. The assassination attempt by Fanny Kaplan obviously contributed to his decline, but many scholars, myself included, believe that he would have been in ill health regardless of the incident, so Stalin, in his position, would have been able to sequester Lenin from the rest of the Bolsheviks. By isolating him, there is little doubt that Stalin could have come up with a plan to kill the leader and get away with it. Now for the curveball I promised at the beginning of the podcast. What if Fanny Kaplan had been successful in assassinating Lenin on August 30th, 1980? This is a scenario much less discussed than Vladimir Ilyich's living longer than he did. This one has garnered some chatter, but not nearly as much as the scenario that she never attempted the assassination. In this alternative universe, we see the rise of Trotsky instead of Stalin as a likely scenario, although with the ideologue of the Bolsheviks gone, it is very possible that the party would have either been ousted from power or forced to share it with others. The Russian Civil War was about to break out, and it is questionable whether the Communists could have retained their position without Lenin. Some have suggested that had Kaplan not attempted to kill Lenin, that somehow the terrors unleashed after the attempt and the murder of Moisey Uritsky in August of the same year. This is simply not true, as the Red Terror was unleashed months earlier in response to the famine that was gripping the country which Lenin blamed on the Kulaks. Here, 
is a cable sent to the communist leaders in Penza on August 11th, 1980, known as the Hanging Order. Comrades, the insurrection of five Kulak districts should be piteously suppressed. The interests of the whole revolution require this because the last decisive battle with the Kulaks is now underway everywhere. An example must be demonstrated. Hang and make sure that the hanging takes place in full view of the people. No fewer than 100 known landlords, rich men, bloodsuckers. Publish their names. Seize all their grain from them. Designate hostages in accordance with yesterday's telegram. Do it in such a fashion that for hundreds of kilometers around, the people might see, tremble, no shout. They are strangling and will strangle to death the blood-sucking kulaks. Telegraph receipt and implementation. Yours, Lenin. Find some truly hard people. If the Bolsheviks survived the Civil War, I believe that in this scenario, Lenin would have likely proven to be almost as tough on the population as Stalin. One difference would have been the handling of fellow old Bolsheviks, as Lenin was not quite as paranoid as his, as his successor and was much more loyal to those around him. Men like Kamenev, Trotsky, Bukharin, Zinoviev would have stayed in power and lived much longer lives with the Lenin leadership, as I mentioned earlier. You know, one really has to remember that Lenin could be just as brutal and vicious as Stalin. So again, as this notion that it would have been a kinder or gentler Soviet Union is somewhat preposterous. Now, we could go on for hours on all the scenarios that might have come about had Lenin lived longer, but I think we'll end it here. And I think what we can do is think about it ourselves. What do we think might have come about had Lenin survived or had he been killed early on? It's something that can be discussed for a long time. And, you know, one thing we could do is if you want to come on to our uh, Facebook uh, page, the Russian Rulers History uh, Facebook fan page, you might say, uh, we can discuss it there. And I think it's something that would be an open discussion because we have some remarkable people who belong to this. You know, we're over 1,600 people. Uh, we have some professors. We have people who have... You know, very liberal and almost communist leanings, and others were extremely conservative, and all in between. There's lots of points of view and some fabulous discussions that have gone on there. So, uh, anyways, join me next time as we restart our journey covering the Romanovs, 300-year rule over Russia, when we look at the tragic figure of Nicholas. And I'm going to do something a little similar to this. The question I'm going to ask is, which ruler in the past... Russian ruler, would have done a better job than Nicholas, given the scenario of where he was and what happened to Russia in that short period of time before in 1917 when he was forced to ad advocate. Again, something that we're going to try to uh, have a discussion about. So I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Before I go, I'd like to put out a request again for donations to the podcast. If you haven't made one in the past, by going to www.russianrulershistory.com and click on the donate button. It really helps to pay the bills and keep the material coming. Any amount is greatly appreciated, and I really thank all of those of you who have donated. So, now, as always, das vidanya i spasiba bolshoya.